Boom. Canada time. It's been since before the Novid hit that I was up here with my baby girl and my wife, my beautiful wife. So we're on Canada time now. And I'm, again, like I said, going to see Neil. Good buddy, Toronto Jew Bear. Old Fort Erie. All right. We're here. Bushwhacking history. Coming to you from Canada. Going to hit Fort Erie. The foundations of the Peace Bridge, International Bridge, then Niagara Falls, and the cave tunnels. Oh my word. You gotta be kidding me. But that's not an inside joke for the bears. Look at that. Friendship Gate, Fort Erie, Canada. Here goes Toronto Jew Bear. Very cool. Man, I'll tell you what, these batteries go quick. I gotta bulk up on one. I'll be good. I'll be judicious about it. <laughs> this is very cool man. yeah let's get some footage out i take pictures with the uh with my camera well phone camera which ain't bad here i'll read this for you let the peace surroundings of this part of this park be enjoyed by the people on both sides of the water to signify the blessings of lasting peace and that only friendship and goodwill shall bridge the frontier between these two nations there you go peace of nations this was written in 1939 and of course uh five years later not much peace in um, between canada and the u.s but uh not the rest of the not world. on the not on the world stage nope. wow this is awesome dude how amazing All right, this is the convergence of, well, Niagara, or Lake Erie going into Niagara River. And we're walking up to the Peace Bridge right now to get eyes on, from the Canadian side, the old mechanical water intake, the first mechanical water, well, no, actually, uh, yes, the first mechanical water intake for the city of Buffalo. Because uh, otherwise it was gravity from Forest Lawn Cemetery. 
Wow. Now you can see the, the power of the Niagara River even up here, not in the gorge. Wow. Look at that, dude. You see how all of this shoreline is artificial. Now you don't know how, you know, whether it was just reinforced, the, the natural shoreline, or whether this is an engineered shoreline. Well, uh, we're gonna have to look that over, like what I was showing you with the Grand Island Bridge. Look, or the Grand, Grand Island itself looks like it was a little bigger. So what did they do in this area, infrastructure-wise, is kind of what I'm getting at here. On top of the cool essence and the eerie nature of Buffalo and the uh, greater Western, Western door in general. Tis the motivation. Look at that. There goes Neil for scale. There's the water intake. Get through that razor wire there, Big trouble. I'm, I got half a mind to hop over this, but I got a lot of layers on. I'm not real, I'm not too nimble right now because of the cold. But this is crazy. Wow, bro, this is what you call bushwhacking. Yeah, you've been over this a few times in your life. Sure have. Never been underneath it like this though, actually. And they say this film, this is blow blend. That's why. 1920s yeah this is so this is we're underneath the peace bridge right now 1920s i think 23 or 26 top of my head and uh, even still with these foundations i'm still pretty suspect about that just look at the iron work in this uh, it's amazing massive massive beams and every one of those rivets had to be counted in by hand I, I haven't learned to zoom on this yet, dude. And that's kind of unfortunate because that's one of the things that I would like to do. I could, because it's taken in 4K, I could zoom in live though. So, yes, yeah, my quandary is now that we've considered the actual ferocious nature of the current that we can see right now. In 1874, I need to know how that was made and planted where it is now with the alleged same current force that it is that you see right now. I mean, and, this water is just moving at probably 30 miles an hour. I, I'd say, you think 30? Maybe, maybe, like, maybe like 15, 20. But still. Still. So that's my, you know, Tartaria, Shmaria, Mud Flood, whatever. What's that? And I haven't been able to find, with all my research right now, anything pertaining to the actual construction of that thing right there. The tunnel to it, yes. And that's believable, plausible. It, in the middle of the river, unless there was something different going on here, and the water level was lower, being the current was lower, then we could talk, but that's not in the historical record. That was there according to the record since 1870 something? Yes, that was built. Here's where the magician's trick of it may come into play because this was being built at the same time as the International Bridge that's downriver that we're gonna go see right now. So yeah. That... So this is, uh, I just gotta say, this is one of the most beautiful rides that you could take around Buffalo if you can get into Canada. I highly recommend going over at the Peace Bridge and hitting the river. And uh, we're in Fort Erie right now, but it gets a little parkway-esque up, or down river more, I should say. And uh, here we are arriving right now at the International Railway Bridge. And you can see how close, or get a sense, actually, how close it is to the Peace Bridge. And uh, there you go. Oh wow, what a great, wow. Holy moly. That's amazing.
Dude, that's an amazing view right there. Oh yeah, for sure. I could fish right underneath, yep. Wow, look at this, dude. This is a beautiful scene right here. I gotta get some GoPro of it. This is amazing. So yeah, those, those two piers right there, dude. It's like 40 feet of water, 12 mile an hour current constantly. This is beautiful though. Are they really? Yeah, it's actually, I kind of like it because they're, uh, they're preserving the, uh, the structure of the building. There you, yeah, and, and the history. Accessible. Look at this, you know, this is crazy. So over on our side, it's a little bit more gradual and I could, I could walk right down to it yep. and fish off of it. And that's Squaw Island right there. Now it's, now it's um, Unity Island because Squaw is, um, it is a derogatory native term for a, uh, look at this little spit. Let's boots on the ground right down to this, uh, these bricks there, because that looks old school without those bricks. Let's do it. Boots on the ground. As such. So yes, I guess squaw is a derogatory term for a native female. So they changed the name of Squaw Island to Unity Island as it goes. Wow, this is a little beach here. Wow, dude, you do. There's a little bit of a beach underneath the Peace Bridge too over there that we didn't really have eyes on. But look at this old wall. So this wall is built on something older. This is old like cobblestone cement, and then they built this, this brickwork on top of it. And then that's literally the foundation of. This behemoth, and uh, yeah. So my question is: Are these things? And uh, Neil, uh, you know, we're thinking coffer dams out, you know, similar to what they say the Brooklyn Bridge, but the Brooklyn Bridge Foundation are closer to shore, and that's a suspension. And that's where Roblin comes on the scene for being real. But he died before it even started. It's kind of weird. Yeah, but you could do you could do the first case on here, maybe the second one. But once you get it to the middle of the river. It's deeper and the and the uh, the current is stronger. So to, to dig those in, I don't know. I don't know how they do it. I, I would also consider that it was done in three years and a shortened work season because of the brutal winters. You got to stop working yep. at October because the storms that come off, the storms push the, the, the sage comes up and that increases the the ferocity exponentially. So you got to stop. And, they, and that, he does say that they stop in the winter. The letter from the... Uh, engineer to the magistrate canadian magistrate said they were having a lot of problems but they got it done in three years yeah now we should also talk about that there was during the war of 1812 there was a crossing by the british right here to uh the american side interesting uh, in the landscape here i don't know what that is but that's definitely a man-made um mound yep that's that's on squaw island unity island and um there's a, i wonder if it has to do with the Unfortunately, there is a sewer processing plant right there as well. One of the black eyes on the American or the uh, Buffalo City planning. There are a couple. The other one being literally the 190 throughway that goes along the old footprint of the uh, Erie Canal. Wow, this is amazing. Well, Look Dustin, at it may be it may be uh, zero degrees Celsius here, but we should chill out on the beach. Maybe, yeah, uh, take yeah, yeah. Let's get out. Let's, let's literally get out of the river. Even though we got the boots, I'm getting wet. Okay. Very cool. Bushwhacking history at the International Bridge, right at the foundation of the uh, of the foundations at the shore of the Niagara River. Very historic place. Very cool place. And most, well, in my opinion, a very ancient, ancient place. What were you just saying? About, what, what's right underneath here, Neil? 180 foot uh, mine shaft. And this, what, shaft. what is this building called again? It's called the Toronto Hydro uh, Power Station. 
I think it was built in 1902, something like that. Now, what you just were, were describing, where it was being, uh, it was getting dilapidated, and because of the urban explorers, the interest in like urban exploring or ancient stuff. What did it do? Yeah, it so, revital. So I'll just tell you a couple. So this this building here, it's just along the Niagara Parkway. There's no parking here. You can't stop. So people have just just drove by here for decades. But this is a uh, hydro power station at the top of the falls. You can see this is the rapids just before the falls. And this has a 180 foot shaft straight down to the bottom of the falls underneath this building. You never know it was there. Urban explorers started to learn that there was a shaft under there and tunnels. And they started going in there and doing uh, blog posts. This is talking about 15 to 20 years ago. Making this place famous, they had to start blocking it off with security. <laughs> and but consequently they've had to save this building a lot of attention got drawn to it so they're now they've now contracted it out to an events comp to a uh, like a boutique hotel company that is uh keeping it keeping the uh the infrastructure in place keeping the uh the building itself in place because it, architecturally it's incredible right um but they're going to turn it into a place where people can get married where there's rooms to rent out you're right at the falls um, I, I, it'll be a fortune to stay there, I'm sure, but there's going to be public viewing docks, decks too. And at least it won't be uh, dilapidated anymore. Some people might have a difference of opinion about that, you know, but uh, it's funny how urban explorers kind of revitalize the interest in stuff yeah. like this. Totally. Gilded Age grit. <laughs> they had some grit in the Gilded Age. That's man. how they made these Tartarian looking buildings. <laughs> this is very cool. So we're gonna go knock on the front door. That's under construction. Yeah, as it were. But we'll see it. Wow. Get Neil and shot for a sense of scale. Yeah, 1906. There it is. Of course we got the six and the nine. Of course. Here. Yep. Very cool. I like the snowflakes for the effect. Well, look, the front door is wide open. Isn't that something? You going live? I'm gonna go live again. Hey guys. Live again with Dustin Berserker Bear. Just wait for a couple people to come in. Dustin's here with his GoPro. This is awesome. Hey y'all. Nobody yet. We're here in Tartaria. Nobody yet. We're here in Tartaria. <laughs> uh, this Canadian says, Tartaria. We were just making fun of John Levi a bit. I, I have respect for John Levi for respect. what he, at least the the thought process he goes through, um, and some of the stuff he comes up with is probably quite accurate. Um, this building here, though, is uh, Hello Ides of Apocalypse. Hey, my friend. Hi, what's up, man? Hello, and Mandel Moreno. Not sure who you are, but welcome. Uh, anyway, we're here at the Toronto Hydro Building, also known as Tartaria North. Uh, this is, you can see there, I think that pole set, or that's uh, the brickwork up there says 1906. So what this is, is the front of a hydro uh, building, a hydro project actually. This building underneath has a 180 foot uh, shaft, mine shaft. Actually it's funny, so we, were just, we just drove here from Fort Erie on the highway. And what's the exit on the highway that we took? Did you notice the name of the road? Um, yeah, I did. Hold on. Uh, it was uh, Sodom. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw a tarot card reading place. I got my. I What's got, going on? <laughs> I'd never been there before, but he's following me, and my my phone my phone directions uh, yeah. say in three kilometers exit at Sodom Road. I started cracking up. We're, he's of course in the other car behind me, so he couldn't Hilarious. hear. Hilarious. Yeah. Um, anyway, so we're here. This is at the base of the falls. Right behind here is the uh, the rapids just above the falls. Yeah. Right under this building is a 180 foot shaft straight down and tunnels that lead out to literally behind the falls. Yeah. So this building here has been sitting derelict for about 20 years. Urban explorers uh, about 15 years ago discovered the, the tunnels, and the, the shaft and the tunnels under here and made it really famous. And I think they kind of drew attention to it because I'm sure at some point they would have to take this thing down. It's right, it's it's uh, it's crumbling, even though it's an incredible they had to building. Pay for it or knock it down. 
incredible architecture. So uh, anyway, to make a long story short, they are now redeveloping it into a uh, boutique event center slash hotel, uh, but also public oh, observation decks. How are you? Kind of worker coming out. Very cool. Yeah, so you'll be the, they'll let people behind uh, walk no, walk the promenades uh, where they have the intake valves for the uh, for the we hydro. Get a, we get a walk in there. Oh, we're just, I'm just recording for my own. Uh... <laughs> Wait, we're worth, with CTV News. It's worth a shot. He's like, Who you what if we're with CTV shot? News? Uh, anyway, we're, uh, we're, it's a gorgeous building. Uh, probably give it another five years, we'll be able to actually go in there. And uh, hopefully they'll be revitalizing the, the tunnels and, and the shaft underneath. Be but amazing. where, we're, where yeah. we're going now, just a little further along, the falls are just down there is the uh, Ontario power uh, generation plant, which is also which was also derelict and run down, that they've already redeveloped into a sort of touristy attraction uh, where they've built an elevator straight down the shaft and then there's a uh, about a half a mile tunnel that takes you to the base of the falls also. So that's our next destination. Joe Gagan, what up Joe? Joe, hello buddy. Oh, you heard see, hey. you know, the, a worker is literally coming out and I'm like, can we get a walk in? He's like, who are you with? <laughs> <laughs> I should have said, said like, yeah. Hey, Yogi. Have Yogi. a good one, man. Take care. Yogi from halfway around the world is What's here. What's up, Yogi? Max out here. What up, guys? Hey, maxed out. I'm All in right. Canada. All right, yeah. anyway, guys, just a few minutes update here and we're going to get moving. It's snowing. It's cold. We're outdoors in Canada, but we're having a great time. Yeah, awesome. All right. Peace out. All right, so we're here. There's the falls over there. Oh wow. Yeah. It's got the original uh, plaque on it. And the birds overhead. How cool is this? Yeah, old. It's got the native in the canoe. That might be, um, I don't know, Sacagawea? Niagara. Oh yeah, Niagara. Certainly native. Wow. You can see how he's got his head, his headdress is pouring back. Just like the women's uh, hair in those other plaques at the, um, at the park earlier. They weren't, they weren't native, but you know, I think that's kind of the connection they were making there with the hair. Boom. What do you think of this? Uh, this bedrock was formed 430 million years ago. I have a hard time with that these days. I mean... That time scale. I really. think it might be 436.66 <laughs> years ago. I think they <laughs> misestimated it. Now, or maybe 666 million years would ago. Would the moon have been created at that time? Or no, was it still was, coalescing in a, that in, was in a cloud? 667 million years ago. <laughs> this place has got nooks and crannies galore. I love it. Yeah, this is good. So we're at the top level right now, as you've seen at the uh, power. What, what, which one is this called? Like, I forget the name of it. Uh, this is the Ontario Power, Power uh, Niagara Parks Power Station, but it was the originally called the Rankin, the Rankin, the Rankin. Power Station. So now we're taking the elevators down to the, down the shafts. 180 feet down to the 2,200 foot uh, tunnel that takes us uh, just to the foot of the falls. It's going to be awesome, and I'll have the GoPro. Ready and handy. Bushwhacking history. Uh, they did put glass on that side, but hey, that's a park commission, not me. So what you're looking at is the brake deck right there. Now that shaft is 135 feet tall. The turbines at the bottom, the generators are on the top. So that combined weight is 90 tons. So we need a lot of water to spin it. Well, look out this door. Oh, we have wow. 11 penstocks. Each penstock is hand riveted. Yeah, you can see that. Yeah. That's no. crazy. 
they sh we shipped up from Buffalo, uh, probably Bethlehem Steel. So I would imagine that guy put those rivets in his death at a very young age, back in the 1800s. <laughs> I can imagine so. That's hilarious. 80,000 gallons of water would come down that thing. Wow. Well, we just seen the diameter of them, that, that display up there you got on the floor. Yeah, don't all the, down at the far end? Yeah, you can walk right through it, yeah. yeah. Oh, look at this, look. Wow. Okay, oh, that would be now coming back, we'll get a shot of uh, the wheel pit. Because oh, uh, wheel pit. we're already here. Tunnel walk, sorry, 2,200 feet long, and it's four and a half a mile one way. Wow. All right, enjoy your walk. Thank you very you much. See those cables hanging down? Sure do. Stop and look up. Okay. Okay. Oh wow. Yeah. You guys, stop and look up. Dude, they just give you the floor. Are you kidding me? You're just like go. Wow. This is amazing. Look at that. All right. Straight up. Got it. Oh, I got some water dripping on me. Oh, yeah, but wow. 169 feet. Straight down, and we're at the base of the escarpment right now. Now, see, what happened a few years ago, once they closed this place and it was uh, running derelict, you had urban explorers belaying themselves down this, this shaft here. Oh, that, that's where the guy probably had his, his uh, ladder. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna have to uh, tie that in here. Wow, that's very cool. Now this, the, the lighting is odd, but these are red bricks. This is red brick. Uh, yeah, it is. You have, look, you, you can see the facade. Well, not really good lit here, but yeah, red brick. It, it isn't that well lit, but it is pretty this, cool. This is, uh, this is called tailing tunnel, which is what they use to take the water that they had pumped down, that they had let drop down the, uh, the what did they call them again? Oh, uh, the, well, the big pipe, the big pipe. We, we just seen it, yeah, you just said what they I were. I can't remember what it's called. The big, the big pipe. It'll come to me. Once it goes through the turbines, it spins the turbines, the water just rushed out here all the way to Niagara Falls. And we're going to see that. Is, we're going to see it at the end. Yeah, the question is, why would they need to, why would it be crooked, and why would they need it to be all this, this uh, distance? when the falls is actually like over there. This is taking us all the way around. What are you getting at? What am I getting at? It's possible this tunnel had already existed and they were just, they were just making reuse of it for their, for their tailing uh, tunnel. Because it's way bigger than they would ever have needed. And this it a takes a strange route to uh, where they would need to get rid of the water. Like it was found and repurposed. That's, that's a, uh, that's a, it's a theory. It's a possibility, allegedly, maybe. Allegedly, could it be? Allegedly. No claims, no claims. I'm not saying that the uh, hydro, I mean, obviously they, they installed the hydro generating equipment. When they did, right. Uh, in the early 1900s. The question but is that, the infrastructure. But it was, was the tunnel already here? Was right. it, was the shaft already here? Could it have been a mining operation that they just repurposed? That's a, that's a possibility. You got somebody walking towards us for scale. What that's you see amazing. here is millions. Okay, so the phone is a little brighter than the GoPro. I'll get the GoPro on. Uh, I wonder if I have service here. When we get eyes. I get a little American service. I, I call my wife. Sorry about the shaky nature of this camera. It's the phone cam. Oh, you feel that wind. Wow. Quite a walk. And like Neil was just saying, this is lined with millions of, millions of red brick. And it does have an interesting shape to it. It's almost like it kind of goes out. Almost like a horseshoe, dude. Totally. That's kind of odd. Why would you do that? Yeah, Up why would... You can see a front layer uh, coming off, and there's a second layer. Second layer underneath. Yes, there is. Yeah, wow, look at this.
seen, which is pretty unbelievable to me how they were able to do that. So I have, I have no idea. This apparently, according to the story, and this was part of the four years of construction in 1901 to 05 to get this power plant up and running. because the you know the outer layer of brickwork is fantastic. But it's just over top of the whole layer of brickwork. And it's not as precise or real. Yeah, is this is this brickwork? This one or this, what, what is going on here? Is that bedrock? Yeah, Okay, this is the proverbial eyes on target. This was the whole goal. Huh dude? Yeah. How does this compare to the, uh, the tunnel that you uh, bushwhacked under Buffalo? Well, it's a little different characteristics. The one I was I was uh, traping through about a foot of water. Yeah. And this one's a little bit more uh, grandiose, if you will. So um, it's a lot easier to walk through and a lot more well lit. <laughs> that was a long walk, dude. When my dad came to get us, because I had to get driven back to our car, mm -hmm. like, dude, we walked far. Far under the. More than. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. This is only half a mile. Dude, yeah, we walked miles in. Wow. For sure. And yeah, here's more of the original work. Look at that. There's a layer. Look at that. So they built up a layer of whatever, concrete. Then they had a layer of brick. Or is that strata? Well, is there's, that... A, there's a flat layer of brick here. There is. I, I think this is. Oh, there is a layer of brick in here. Yeah, I think this Can is kind I... of a pebble concrete, and then yeah. then a layer of brick was on top. So that might have been the original walk. You might have had the original walkway, and then they dug it out deeper. See, there's two layers here. There's seven layers. There's there's a layer of strata or of uh, or concrete, and then there's a layer of brick. Another layer, another layer of brick. Maybe we can ask him. That's the sandstone. How we doing? Wow. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. This is it. <laughs> Dude. That's the American Falls. Wow, it's a little obscured by the fog and the, the snow cover, but you, oh, there you can see the top of it over there. Oh, there it is, dude! Wow! Oh my gosh! Absolutely phenomenal! There go the Canadian Horseshoe Falls panorama. The next object this spring will be in the Maid of the Mist for you. We'll get some footage on the water. Did you ever do the Maid of the Mist? No. So Table Rock would have been up here too. That might be Table Rock right there. What's left of it because it did get knocked down. And this is the crazy building right here. Yes, this is, okay. With the, with the long series of, of uh, open doors. This is the anomalous one that uh, pictures that are taken of the Niagara Falls prior to the alleged construction of this really do a good job of keeping this area out of these pictures so i wonder if that's you know hey it just whatever happenstance or is there another motive behind it was this building here but we did find that 1922 video of ontario power where it seemed to be this building in in, in use it did it did seem to be this building in use they again it could have been found though and i've shared a video before where a gentleman on a channel that is no longer around the point of peripety suspected that these buildings not only on the canadian side but the other sholkoff buildings downstream a little bit if they were all here before and of course that gets into the mud flood tartaria territory but we're a little bit beyond that here as you can see but yeah there go the falls absolutely beautiful and this plunge pool that's another thing a characteristic that's insane about this area is that these falls are 150 feet. This plunge pool is 160 feet deep. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. something that blows my mind. Yeah. yeah. I can't believe it's that deep. Yep. Anybody have any questions? 
is about uh, a foot of Niagara Falls here on a cold winter's day. The first layer of brick were um, hollow. Or, yes, the first one as in going in. Okay. And then for uh, regular solid bricks, you can actually see on the museum we have some of the bricks on display that they used. Uh, this section here kind of broke away because I think this is, this was more the original ending. It ended there because you could see that this is a bit newer, these parts. Yep, the facade. So, because this was the end, this had the most amount of pressure, and that's why the some of the brick broke away. Right. And eventually they would have added this part. What he's referring to is the brick coming off here. So there is an argument that um, these tunnels were here before. And I don't know, maybe they weren't this big. But um, and they were just added on to. What's interesting is that there is a layer of brick in there, and I can assure you that's not melted brick. Okay, it's just shoved in there, guys. Doesn't mean that the fucking wall turned into brick there. Pocket of protection here. Come on, guys. Okay, we're looking at the, there's a transition right here from going straight up and down to inside the tunnel. It's more horseshoe shaped. Yeah, it bows outwards towards the top. It bows outwards. But the actual entrance is straight up and down, right? To the arch. But as you go into, it transitions literally right here. And you can see it, Neil pointed it out. So it goes from straight up and down to in here, it goes out a little bit. Interesting engineering anyway, because uh, it seems like it would make things more difficult. It does. But maybe, maybe it's better for load bearing. Maybe it's better for load way. bearing. And the one parks guy said that this is actually rounded out at the bottom as well. So they had to smooth it. So it all would have been rounded. And it does look like it's an upside down egg shape here. But right at the entrance, it is straight up and down. So it does transition. And that's got to be impeccable masonry. It is impeccable masonry, but man. Incredible masonry. And the, to, to, be, to be able to line things up upside down on the roof so not, that bricks are not falling, that they're, that they're bearing in on themselves must have been, a, I don't know, some kind of magic trick. It's unbelievable what they did. Unless they had a really super strong mortar that, was just, that they were just sticking to. But I don't think so, because more bricks, more bricks would fall. Yeah, I was thinking about as I was walking underneath them. Like. So they must, they must be shaped bricks. I don't know, man. Very interesting. Very, it's incredible. Incredible I like the lighting here. We're right under the shaft. And we're going back up topside. Okay, so we just walked out of the power station and now we are 
literally looking at the Canadian view of Niagara Falls. And don't I have 36% left? Well, 35 now on my GoPro. I'll take a picture of that. This is amazing. I think some people would jump their barrel in right here too, maybe. Could be. Couldn't pay me enough. No way. Parts of a See, there's the old Toronto building. So that's that, that either. That's where we were just at. Either the Niagara Park Parks Commission couldn't get their hands on that plot of land, or the, that story is a bullshit cover. It's a bullshit story, cover story. Way, we'll talk about it more. Well, we're presenting it right now as you're watching it. So we'll stop and we'll talk about it. That's the mechanized weir. Yeah, so they can they can uh, adjust the flow and, and close the it off. Yep. But that's that's a joint international project. Most of the most of the um, the flow is diverted now of this fall. I'd say close to 50% of it is. Yeah. Phenomenal view right here. Even though it's not really uh, sunny out, you can still get the. Uh, the grandiosity of what's going on here. It's very humbling. Very humbling, ain't it? When I was a kid, I was scared as hell of going up to the railing. I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, feel, I didn't feel secure. Unfortunately, things happen. And you remember Superman 2, I think, was filmed partly at Niagara Falls. Yeah, and Superman the saved a kid. Yes. Yeah, yes. Superman saved a kid. Here it is, right here. It was probably filmed in Canada because it's better views. Yeah. Look at that. There's the brink. This is insane. Insane, dude. 